This is samphire. It's a salty, crunchy succulent, and it's part of a group of plants called halophytes. These plants grow really well in salty soil, and some researchers are even calling them the future of food. Now, if you're like, halophytes? Never heard of them. Sounds weird. I assure you, you have. Chard and beets originally come from halophytes from the Mediterranean, and quinoa from South America became a mainstream superfood in the past decade. In fact, regions all around the world have their own native salt-resistant plants, like saltbush in Australia or sea blight in Spain. Some of these plants are grown for human consumption, while others are processed into animal feed. These plants have amazing biological tricks to handle salt. Some block the salt from entering their roots, others store them in safe pockets inside their leaf cells, and others even excrete the excess salt through their glands. Here is why this matters. Salt is usually agriculture's worst enemy. Right now, over 20% of the world's cultivated land and 33% of irrigated farmland are too salty, and it's only getting worse. Rising sea levels are pushing salt water into coastal farmland, and climate change is causing longer and deeper droughts, which leave behind salty minerals as the water evaporates from the soil. This is a huge problem for traditional crops, but not for halophytes. Now, there are definitely challenges to making halophytes more widely available. Farmers need incentives to grow new crops, Consumers need to be willing to try them, and there is a whole supply chain and infrastructure that must be built to make this whole thing sustainable. The crazy thing is, even though these plants have so much potential, they're still pretty niche. When I went looking for samphire, the only place I could find it was at this fancy supermarket, and even then it was pickled. But with the world getting saltier by the day, some researchers think that these plants could be a big part of the solution for food security. So what do you think?